Summary of Catholic News for the Year 2021 Dear friends of the work of God, this is a brief summary of the most important events of our Catholic Church in the year 2021. We invite you to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date. The Latin American Synodal Journey Begins this new synodal form allows for breadth of criteria on many religious issues and delegates to the bishops the local authority to make changes, although some will be beneficial. Many controversies are sure to arise. Part of the Catholic Church against Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro Together with the theologian Leonardo Boff, a religious link to Pope Francis, they are promoting together with Protestant groups an impeachment petition against the President of Brazil due to his policy on the face of the coronavirus pandemic. Honduras criminalizes abortion forever. The reform to Article 67 is aimed at preventing abortion from being legalized in the future in Honduras and is called the Shield Against Abortion. It arose in response to the unstoppable green feminist movement that throughout Latin America is seeking to defend women's, women's rights and legalize free abortion in all countries of the region. Diocese of Minnesota pays $21.5 million to victims of sexual abuse. The Diocese of Winona Rochester in Minnesota reached an agreement to pay $21.5 million to 145 individuals who suffered sexual abuse at the hands of its priests. The Vatican entity called Aid to the Church in Need said it deeply regrets the allegations against its founder, Father Warren Fried Van Stratton. The Catholic News Agency said it paid a woman 10,000 euros for her sufferings plus 6,000 euros to her pension upon determining that her allegations of abuse in 1973 seemed very plausible. She was 23 years old at the time. The Chinese dictatorship will create a large database on all religious personnel. The State Administration of Religious Affairs, SARA, has launched a database that will collect all information on religious personnel. It will also record the awards and punishments they have received, including the cancellation of their ministry and any other information. All of these will be kept up to date in a timely manner. Pastor of vandalized churches in Chile receives Religious Freedom Award. April 20, Aid to the Church in Need in Spain grants the Religious Freedom Award every two years, and in this edition the work of Father Pedro Nabona, pastor of the churches of the Assumption and Vera Cruz in Santiago de Chile, which were attacked on several occasions, was recognized. Men dressed as policemen robbed the Episcopal Conference in Bogota. Eight armed men entered the place and threatened and gagged the staff there in order to subdue them. The criminals went straight to the safe of the place and took a large sum of money. No one was injured. After investigations, it was confirmed that two policemen were involved in the attack. Religions and Ecology can faith save the planet? The Catholic religion has spoken out strongly in favor of the environment by promoting the encyclical Laudato Si, but it is not about using faith to ask God for a good climate. It is about promoting laws that take care of the environment. We forget God's word that says, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, If my people who bear my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek me, and forsake their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and restore their land. God will heal the earth if we give up sin. 
Man can never control the weather. The church wastes its time and calls for idolatry of the earth. Catholic bishops to Biden Don't take communion if you support abortion. Kansas City Archbishop Joseph Noman, chairman of the Conference Committee on Pro-Life Activities, believes Biden deserves a public scolding. He says such a stance toward abortion in a public figure is a grave moral evil. The fact that President Biden is Catholic means a unique problem for us, Noman told the Associated Press. It can create confusion. How can he say he's a devout Catholic and do these things that are contrary to the magisterium of the Church? Many attacks on the Church in the year 2021 In the United States, Monsignor Rossi of Washington said a man entered the enclosed garden by scaling his fence Sunday night. He then proceeded to rip off the Blessed Mother's arms and attack her face with a hammer as he was leaving he took her hands. In Mexico, as part of protests organized in different parts of Mexico for Women's Day, hooded women armed with sticks broke the doors of the temple and entered to paint the interior, destroy glass, windows, pews, and the confessional on March 7 in the Church of San Damian and San Cosmas in downtown Oaxaca. Penal Code approved this Wednesday contemplates an exemption for termination of pregnancy. The Chamber of Deputies of the Dominican Republic approved on April 28 in first reading to decriminalize abortion in the case of risk to the life of the mother. The vote took place in the midst of protests by feminist groups who demanded the criminalization of abortion on three grounds, and not just one, as approved by the deputies. The Bishop of Passau, Germany, Monsignor Stephen Stefan Oster, confronted theology professor and defender of the ordination of women to the priesthood, Johanna Rachner, who called Catholics who reject the concept of gender equality within the Church racists. Vatican urged to take more action against child sexual abuse. In Geneva, Switzerland, independent human rights Experts working with the United Nations urge the Vatican to do more to curb and prevent violence and sexual abuse against minors, highlighting persistent allegations of obstruction and lack of cooperation by the Catholic Church. The United Nations Human Rights Body said they added that the violations were allegedly committed over decades in many countries against tens of thousands of victims. Madrid, June 22, more than 2.2 million couples have divorced in Spain since the law regulating the breakup of marriage, a virtually indissoluble institution during Franco's dictatorship from 1939 to 1975, came into force 40 years ago today. Apart from the incompatibility of couples, the sacrament of Catholic marriage has lost its interest on the part of couples. Today there is talk of free love, of couples for convenience, for sex. Little is heard of couples for procreation. Why did the Catholic Church ratify its resounding no to euthanasia? The Episcopal Conference of Colombia, through a communique, stated this position against euthanasia in view of the ruling of the Constitutional Court of Colombia on July 22, which extends the fundamental right to die with dignity to those who suffer intense suffering due to bodily injury or serious and incurable disease, so that now it is not a requirement to be a terminal patient to request euthanasia as the same High Court had provided in 1997. Life is a gift from God that only He Himself can take away. It is not ours. The fifth commandment says, do not kill. Bet you the powerful cardinal that the Vatican is judging for corruption. Vatican City, July 27, EFE. Cardinal Angelo Vecchio, 
who in the past was one of the most powerful men in the Curia and a close collaborator of Pope Francis, will be tried from today at the Vatican in a historic process on corruption, which sits for the first time in a cardinal in the dock. It is incredible and unpleasant to know that corruption also occupies the hierarchy of the Church. Fernando Caradima, the priest who symbolized the abuses of classism in the Chilean Church, influential for mayor of priests and bishops, and the face of the attachment of a part of the Chilean Catholic Church to the economic and social power, Fernando Caradima died this Sunday in Santiago de Chile at the age of 90, symbol of the double standards of many members of the Catholic Church hierarchy. Catholic priest was attacked with a glass bottle while praying in a cathedral. On Monday, July 26, a man wielding a glass bottle attacked the Catholic priest who was praying in St. Mary's Cathedral in Edinburgh, Scotland. The priest escaped without injury. The devil hates priests and will always find mad men who will attack churches, priests, and Catholic faithful. Burning of churches in Canada and the demolition of the statues of Prince Victoria and Elizabeth II uh, for the scandal of the death of indigenous children. The recent discovery in Canada of the deaths of hundreds of indigenous children who for decades were sent to boarding schools run by the Catholic Church has led protesters to vent their anger through the burning up of several churches and the destruction of statues of Queen Victoria and Elizabeth II. Young woman leads two medals at the Olympics, gold and the miracle medal. The 30-year-old participated in weightlifting at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, winning first place in the 55-kilogram category with an Olympic record lifting a total of 224 kilograms. Diaz received the gold medal, wearing the miraculous medal around her neck, and after listening with emotion to the Philippine national anthem, she raised her finger pointing to heaven, thanking God for her achievement. Denying communion to an abortionist politician is an act of charity. Tulsa U.S. Bishop David Conderla brought on July 16th in a communication entitled, Lord, I am not worthy, in which he exhorted the faithful to recognize the true presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Referring to President Biden, he said, So, if a political leader who professes to be Catholic supports abortion, he becomes a public accomplice to a grave evil. If they become aware of this sin, they should repent and not come forward to receive Christ in Holy Communion until they are reconciled to Him through the Church. Therefore, denying communion to an abortionist politician is an act of charity. Pope's Catechesis Hypocrisy jeopardizes Church unity Pope Francis reflects on St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, in which the Apostle rebukes Peter, for his inconsistent behavior that caused division in the community. In this regard, the pontiff stresses that hypocrisy endangers the unity in the Church for which Jesus himself prayed, and therefore encourages everyone not to be afraid of the truth or to hide behind a mask, since this does not allow us to be ourselves. I think it would be good to always take the log out of our own eye before looking at the speck in our brother's eye. The moral considerations of the bishops of Puerto Rico or the COVID-19 vaccine. The bishops of Puerto Rico agree with the mandatory vaccination and point out that there is no basis in the moral teaching of the Church to reject the vaccination requirements. Therefore, it is not authorized in our dioceses that priests, deacons, or agents of the Church appear before notaries to declare on the rose exemptions for religious reasons. It is a pity that vaccines made with cells from aborted babies are not an objection for the Church and that the fear of the religious 
and their lack of faith is above their position on abortion and their complicity with those who use it for their own ends, as do the big pharmaceutical companies. Two priests died, 200 Catholic churches were destroyed and another 150 damaged in the departments affected by the earthquake of last August 14th. Luger Mazil, spokesman of Haitian Bishops Conference, lamented in describing the significant damage after the earthquake of August 14th, which left some 200 churches destroyed and 150 damaged in the south and many schools reduced to ruins. Sacred Predators A book that tells the story of Mexican clerical pederasty. Mexico City, September 17th, EFE. The media denunciation against clerical pederasty is no longer enough in Mexico, but must strengthen the victims to be able to continue pressuring the authorities, said Bernardo Barranco, coordinator of the book Sacred Predators, in an interview with EFE on Friday. United States, 40 attacks on Catholic churches as of September. 40 attacks on Catholic churches have been recorded in the United States over the course of 2021. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, USCCD, has published a report on its website listing Catholic churches attacked in the country since May 2020. In 29 states across the country, there have been churches that have suffered arson and vandalism, from looting to the beheading of sacred images. Priests acquitted of using Christmas carols to promote conversions to Catholicism. After years of legal battles, the High Court of Madhya Pradesh, India, acquitted Father George Mangalapalli, a priest who was accused of alleged false conversions because he sang Christmas carols in the streets. The reality is that we are losing our religious freedom. Germany expelled from the church for rejecting inclusive language. The president of the Association for the German Language, Walter Kramer, was forced to leave the church in Germany for not wanting to submit to gender ideology, in particular inclusive writing. Recently, he clashed with the bishop of the Diocese of Hildesheim, protesting a pamphlet promoting inclusive language, protesting a pamphlet promoting inclusive language, not wanting to contribute financially to this degradation, which is both an abdication and a danger to the faith, he has to pay the church tax in another diocese. Archbishop Michael Opetit of Paris resigned over his relationship with a woman. The Archbishop offered Pope Francis his resignation, said the Diocese of the French capital, which admitted that the prelate behaved ambiguously with a woman in 2012, following press revelations attributing a relationship between them. Pope Francis defended the Archbishop, saying he did so not because he was a sinner, but because he was placed on the altar of hypocrisy. Who condemned him? Public opinion. Francis said on the papal plane during the flight back to Italy from Greece. It is a sin, but it is not a grave sin. Sins of the flesh are not the most serious, he said. Opetit is a sinner like me. Well, according to this, we have a church that does not consider that sin offends God. But let us remember that sin crucified Christ on the cross. And to conclude our Catholic news summary, we've got this great news about Holy Communion on the tongue that we will expand on later on. Bishop of Armenia authorizes communion on the tongue. As of January 1st, 2022, the faithful of the Diocese of Armenia, Quindio, Colombia, may have the option of receiving Holy Communion on the tongue. In a communicate from the bishop, as part of a decree of fees for the diocese, which comes into effect on January the 1st, 2022, Monsignor Carlos Arturo Quintero Gomez allows the faithful to receive Holy Communion on the tongue. 
If you like this video, please give us a like, share it, don't forget to leave your valuable comments. And so that you can receive news from the Catholic Church, please subscribe to our channel, The Work of God. God bless you.